Hey friends, welcome to the YouTube channel all about electronics. So in the previous video, we understood the basics of the random access memory. So in this video, we will learn about the address decoding in the RAM. And with the help of the timing diagram, we will also see that how the read and the write operations are performed in the memory. So in the previous video, we have seen that the RAM is the volatile memory which CPU frequently accesses during the operations. And the CPU can read as well as the write the data in this memory. So we have seen that the RAM is the collection of the words, where the word is basically a group of bits or the storage cells. So if the RAM consists of total 2 to the power k words, then each word can be accessed with the help of the k address lines. That means by applying the specific binary address of the k bits, we can access any of the following words in the memory. Now if the each word consists of the n bits, then to read the data from the memory, we require the n output lines. And to write the data, we require n input lines. And to perform this read and the write operations, we also require two control signals. Then after we have seen that, typically in the RAM, instead of having the separate data lines for the inputs and outputs, the same data lines are used for input as well as the output. That means typically, these data lines are the bidirectional. Now if you see the commercially available memories, then they used to apply these control signals differently. So instead of having the two separate control signals for this read and the write operations, they have a one control signal for selecting the memory and a one control signal to select the operation. So this read write control pin selects the either read or the write operation and this enable signal enables the memory. Now the need for this enable pin is that sometimes a multiple memories are connected with the CPU. And with the help of this enable pin, it is possible to select the specific memory during the operation. So whenever this enable pin is zero, then the memory chip will get disabled. And the irrespective of the value of this read write control signal, the no operation is performed on the memory. So whenever this enable pin is one, then the memory will get enabled. And in this condition, depending on this read write control pin, the memory will perform either read or the write operation. So whenever this read write control signal is equal to 1, then the memory will perform the read operation. And based on the address on this address line, the memory will read the data from the specific word. Similarly, when the enable signal is high, and whenever this read write control signal is equal to 0, then the memory will perform the write operation. And depending on the address on this address line, the memory will write the data in the specific word. So now, let us see. When the read and the write operations are performed, then in what sequence these different signals are applied to the memory. And let us understand it with the help of the timing diagram. So to perform the read operation, first the address corresponding to the specific word from which we want to read the data is applied to the memory. Now once this address line gets stable, then to enable this memory, this enable signal is applied. And then to read the data from the memory, this read signal is applied. So if we see the timing waveform, then this is how it will look like. So as you can see, to perform the read operation, first the address signal is applied. So as you can see, once the address signal gets settled, then this enable signal is applied. And once this enable signal is also get settled, then this read signal is made high. And as soon as we made this read signal high, then the read operation will be performed in the memory. So after some delay, the valid data from the memory will be available on the output. And once it is available, then the CPU can read this data. So once the read operation is performed by the CPU, then this enable signal is made low. And until this enable signal gets deactivated, both address and the data signals should remain stable for the short time. So this time between the valid address is applied to the memory, and the time when the valid data is available on the output is known as the access time of the memory. And during this memory operation, the time after which the next valid address can be applied to the memory to perform the next read or the write operation is known as the cycle time. So that is how the read operation is performed in the memory. So similarly, for the write operation, now let us see the sequence in which these different signals are applied to the memory. So once again, the address signal 
corresponding to the word into which we want to write the data is applied to the memory. Then after the data which we want to write into the memory is also applied on the data line. And once it is applied, then the memory is enabled. And then after the write signal is applied to the memory. So this is the timing diagram for the write operation. So as you can see, first the valid address signal is applied to the memory. And similarly, the data which you want to write into the memory is also applied to the data line. So once these signals get settled, then the memory is enabled. And after some time, the write signal gets activated. So here, since the write signal is active low, so after some time, it is made logic low. So once the write signal is activated, then after some time, the data which is available on the data bus will be written in the memory at the specific location. So here as you can see, at this time, the data is latched in the memory and as soon as it is latched, then this write signal gets deactivated. And once it is deactivated, then after some time, this enable signal is also deactivated. So until this control signal gets disabled, this address and the data signals should remain stable. And once these signals are disabled, then after the short amount of time, the new address can be put on the address line. So that is how the read and the write operations are performed in the memory. But now, let us see the logic circuit which can actually perform this read and the write operations in the memory. Now we know that the memory is the collection of the storage cells which is often referred as the binary cell. And we know that this binary cell stores the one bit of information. So here, to understand the internal construction of the RAM, we will see the logic circuit of the one binary cell. And during our further discussion, we will revision this logic circuit by this small block. So as you can see this block, the binary cell has the three inputs and the one output. So as you can see, this select pin enables the binary cell. And once the binary cell is selected, then based on this read-write control signal, either read or the write operation will be performed on the binary cell. So whenever this write operation is performed, then the data from the data line is put on the binary cell. And whenever this read operation is performed, then the data from the binary cell is sent as an output to the data line. So this is the corresponding logic circuit for this binary cell. So here, the storage part of the binary cell is modeled using the SR latch. So in reality, if you see, then this binary cell is the collection of four to six transistors, which holds the one bit of information. Or simply it can be a charged capacitor, which holds the one bit of information in form of charge. But here for the simplicity, it is modeled using the SR latch. So basically, it is a logic circuit of the binary cell to understand its working. So now in this circuit, then the select input is zero, then the latch will remain in the same state. Because at that time, as you can see, both S and R inputs are zero. Therefore, the latch will remain in the same state. And whenever the select input is zero, then as you can see, this output will also remain zero. So now, when the select pin is logic one, then the latch will get enabled. And depending on this read and the write signal, either input will be stored in the latch or the data which is stored in the latch will be put on the output side. So whenever this read write control signal is equal to one, then as you can see, the read operation will be performed. So in this condition, if you see, then the output of this not gate is equal to zero. And therefore, both S and the R inputs will remain zero. That means in this condition, the latch will remain in the same state. But now, the output of this latch will be available on the output side. Because as you can see, this write signal is one. And similarly, the select signal is also equal to one. That means the output of this AND gate will be equal to Y. Or in other words, the output of this SR latch will be available at the output side. So in this way, when the read-write signal is equal to 1, then the read operation is performed and the data on the cell is put on the output side. Similarly, when this read-write signal is equal to 0, then this output will also remain 0. But now if you see, then the output of this NOT gate is equal to 1. So now, when this input is equal to 1, then the S is equal to 1 
and the r is equal to 0 and in this condition the 1 will be stored in this sr latch similarly whenever this input is equal to 0 then the s will be 0 and this r is equal to 1 so now the 0 will be stored in this sr latch so in this way when the read write signal is equal to 0 then the write operation is performed in this binary cell so that is the logic circuit corresponding to the one binary cell now like i said earlier in the memory typically the same data lines are used for both input as well as the output so in this case using the bidirectional buffer the same data lines can be shared between the input as well as the output so as you can see when this read signal is equal to 1 then this lower buffer will get activated and now the output on the binary cell will be available on this data line that means in this condition the cpu can read the data from this data line and at that time as you can see this top buffer will remain deactivated and therefore the content on the data line will not reach on this input side on the other end when the read signal is zero then the top buffer will get enabled and the bottom buffer will get disabled so in this condition whatever data that is available on the data line will be available on this input side that means in this condition the data which is provided by the cpu can be written in the binary cell so that is the overall logic circuit for the one binary cell now we know that in the ram the group of binary cell makes the one word and the ram consists of multiple such words so depending on the select input the specific group of binary cells can be selected in the memory so to understand how this select input selects the specific group of binary cells let us take the example of small 16 cross 4 size ram it means that it consists of total 16 words and the word length of the each word is equal to 4 bits so as you can see over here the group of four binary cell makes the one word so here with the help of the decoder or to be precise with the help of the 4 to 16 decoder we can select any one of the 16 words so as you can see over here the select input of all the binary cells which are in the same word are connected together moreover if you see then here we have a four input lines as well as the four output lines and again using the bidirectional buffers these four lines are shared with the data lines so here as you can see the binary cells in the same column are sharing the same input and the output lines and here the read write signal is applied to the all binary cells so now let us see how the specific group of binary cells are selected and how the read and write operations are performed in this memory so let's say the input of this decoder or this address is equal to 0010 so as soon as this enable signal is applied to the decoder then this decoder will select the second word or in other words all the binary cells corresponding to the second word will get enabled now let's say we want to perform the read operation so for that this read signal will made logic one and here since the second word is selected so only that word will respond to this read signal and now the each binary cell in the second word will put the data on the output line so similarly on the same word suppose if you want to write the data then instead of one the zero will be applied to this control line so as soon as we apply the write signal in the memory the ram will accept the input data and the each binary cell in the second word will store the corresponding data that is available on the input line so that is the internal construction of the ram and with the help of the decoder these addresses are decoded and the read and the write operations are performed in the memory so if you have followed the earlier videos of the decoder on the channel then you must be aware that if we have a 3 to 8 decoder with the enable input then it requires the 8 AND gates and the each AND gate will require the 3 inputs for the input line as well as the one more input for this enable pin so in general if we have a k input decoder then it requires total 2 to the power k AND gates and the each AND gate will require total 2 to the power k inputs so as the number of words in the memory increases then the required size of the decoder will also increase and because of that the complexity of the decoding logic will also increase so typically to avoid this problem the coincident decoding is used in the memory 
So in this two dimension decoding, the memory cells are arranged in a such a way that the cell arrangement remains very close to the square structure. So here, instead of using a single K input decoder, two K by two input decoders are used. For example, if we take the one K word memory, then to decode this memory, we require the 10 input decoder. But here in this coincident decoding, instead of using a 110 input decoder, the two 5 input decoders are used. So basically, here this 10 bit address is divided in the two parts. The one part is given to the row decoder, which selects the specific row, and the second part of the address is given to the column decoder, which selects the specific column. So based on these two addresses, the specific row and the column will get selected. And at the location where this row and the column coincides, that location will get selected. So here, the each dot represents the specific word in the memory. For example, if the input to the row decoder is equal to 11110, then it will select the second last row. Similarly, if the input to the column decoder is also equal to 11110, then it will also select the second last column. And accordingly, this word where both row and the column coincides will get selected. So once again, here the each word will have the n number of bits. So in this case, as you can see, it consists of the eight bits. So in this way, using the coincident decoding, we can simplify the decoding logic. For example, for this 1K word memory, if we have only single 10 input decoder, then we require total 1, 0 to 4 end gates. But in this case, in this coincident decoding, we require only two fine input decoders. And as you know, the each decoder will have total 2 to the power 5 end gates, that is equal to 32 end gates. And in total, if you see, then it will require only 64 end gates. That means with the help of the coincident decoding, the decoding logic will get simplified. So in the actual RAMs, because of their very large capacity, this address decoding is arranged in the two-dimensional array. And for even larger memories, multiple such arrays are used. Now in the large memories, to reduce the pin count of the memory package, the address multiplexing technique is used. So let us understand that with the help of one example. So in this case, as you can see, the total number of words in the memory is equal to 1024. That is equal to 2 to the power 5 times 2 to the power 5. But let's say we have a memory which has total 64k words. So this 64k is equal to 2 to the power 16. That is equal to 2 to the power 8 times 2 to the power 8. So for the coincident decoding, we will require two 8 input decoders. That means here, we will require the 8 address pins for the row decoder and the other 8 pins for the column decoder. That means in this case, we will require total 16 address pins for the address decoding. But suppose we do not have that luxury, then we can reduce the number of pins by using the address multiplexing. So in this address multiplexing, the address is applied in the two different steps. So first, using the 8 pins, the row address is applied. And then, using the same 8 pins, after some time, this column address is applied. So now, instead of total 16 pins, we will require only 8 pins for the addressing. And in this way, it is possible to reduce the pin count of the memory. So let us see how this technique is carried out. So once again, here we are considering the 64k word memory. That means here, for the coincident decoding, we will require the two 8 input decoders. So as you can see, here the each decoder has its row address and the column address register. And these 8 address lines are shared between the two registers. So here, we also have the two more control signals, that is CAS and the RAS. So this RAS stands for the row address strobe while the CAS stands for the column address strobe. So here, first the 8-bit address corresponding to this row address decoder is applied. And then, this row address strobe signal is activated. So in this case, since it is an active low signal, so it will be made low. That means now, this 8-bit row register will get enabled and this 8-bit address will get latched into this register. And according to this 8-bit address, this row address decoder can select the specific row. So during this time, since the CS signal is high, 
so this column address register will remain disabled so once the row address decoder selects the specific row then this rs signal is made high and now this 8 bit address corresponding to this column address register is applied on the address line and now this cs signal is made low so now this 8 bit address will get latched into this column register and according to this 8 bit address this column address decoder can select the specific column so in this way now since both row and the column addresses are available so specific word in the memory can be selected and according to this read and the write control signal either we can read the data from the memory or we can write the data at the specific word so that is the basic idea of the address multiplexing now in this memories while storing or retrieving the data from the memory some errors may can occur and these errors may occur because of the interference between the different electrical signals so to improve the reliability of this memory different error detection and the error correction codes are used in the memory so the most common type of error detection technique is the parity bit so whenever the data is stored in the memory then this additional parity bit is also added along with the data bits so this parity checkers can certainly check the errors but they cannot correct the errors so for correcting the errors multiple parity check bits are stored along with the data bits so whenever the word is read back from the memory then the associated parity bits are also read from the memory and they are compared with the new set of parity bits that are generated from the data that is being read from the memory and if there is only single error in the received data then with the help of this three parity bits it is possible to correct that error so one of the most commonly used error correcting code in the ram is the hamming code and earlier we have already covered this parity bit and the hamming codes in the detail so for more information you can check this videos so in this video in a simplified manner we have seen that how the address of the ram is decoded and how the read and the write operations are performed in the memory so nowadays the two types of rams are used in the memory that is the s ram and the d ram so this s ram stands for the static ram while the d ram stands for the dynamic ram so in the d ram the memory bit is stored in the form of charge across the capacitor and since the data is stored in the form of charge so it also needs the periodic refresh and that is why this type of ram is known as the dynamic ram so among the two types of memories this s ram is faster than the d ram and typically it is used as a cache memory in the computer systems while if you see the d ram then it is used as a main memory so earlier i have already made a video for this s ram and the d ram where i have covered the differences between the two types of rams and also covered the internal structure of these two rams so for more information you can check this videos but i hope in this video you got the basic idea how the read and write operations are performed in the memory and how the address decoding is carried out so if you have any question or suggestion then do let me know here in the comment section below if you like this video hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more such videos